Allow me the pleasure of introducing you to Blade, Laser, Blazer. Welcome in to the Bro Four Squad podcast, where we're just a bunch of bros drinking beer and talking movies. This is our 92nd episode. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. I am your host, the Mayor Jeff Hornacek, and before we get into the movie discussion, let's go around and meet the fellow bros first. We go into the lab to the mad scientist, Brian Banner. Now, Banner, since you are a man of numbers and science, be shoot me straight here. What are the odds of this five-game WNBA parlay I put down hitting tonight? 18 over 47. Uh, what did we think? Was that stuff like 43%, right? Is that what it is? Uh, it's about 38. out because of a period, right? She's not going to play. Or she's well, she missed game. last night. It's about 38.3% rounded, obviously. The flow is heavier tonight, Jeff. There's no way she'll play. God damn it. Vegas knew something I didn't. I should have known. <laughs> Vegas is all over the periods. And next, we go into the paint. You just imagine our... Vegas. They just have like a menstrual cycle board. And they're like, oh, oh, this team automatically, <laughs> their odds go up. This person's off their period now. If Vegas Adam thought Schefter's it was like Mary Williams, nine month pregnant game time decision. Like how, how is she going to play? She's going to tape it up. <laughs> Cause it's the no playoffs. <laughs> Jordan tape played it. with the flu. Yeah. It's the same thing. God, how many, the two female for six people on the court the whole time. I'm like, it's not my fault. I'm pregnant. Two uh, female listeners who accidentally clicked our podcast are like, wow. Uh, could you be more misogynistic? In the first two minutes. And if you want to test that theory, wait till you hear our chest day topic. Yeah, can. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Next, we go into the paint to our enforcer, Matt Geiger. Matt, now that Halloween's over, as people are listening to this, how do we get away with fucking with kids and shithead teenagers in our neighborhood at night? That's a tough one, man, because Halloween kind of gave us an out because the cops have kind of been our ass. I guess we'll have to go on Mr. Herbert's porch from Family Guy and just wait for the paper boy to come. <laughs> What's it from? There's a movie uh, that this quote's from that you reminded me of. Like, cops been fucking breathing down our necks. <laughs> Is that the watch like with? Vin, or something, or I think it's a bit still in the watch. Yeah, because they pull, they give him a ticket in like that Costco parking lot because they have an open alcohol container, and he goes, "Geez, you can't even drink in your car anymore." <laughs> ben Stiller's like, "When could you do that?" <laughs> I must have missed that decade. All right. <clears throat> If you have listened to our show before, or even if you haven't, we start every episode off with the most important thing in any bro's life. That is our chest day topic. Now, uh, today we, we are doing a thing called a brospective, which is basically our spin on a what, the classic fuck one, kill one, marry one game. So what we are actually doing is uh, we're taking three movie or TV characters and we're going to put a little spin on the topic. So we're going to each name a movie character that we basically want to hook up with. A movie character that we want to marry. But instead of one that we want to kill, we're going to do one that we want to become. Like a movie character we wish we could be. Now, the first two, is it misogynistic? No. I mean, they're fake people. And honestly, if you were holding us to a higher standard than this, then you probably either haven't listened to our show before. Or you were just going to be let down like at some point in the next 30 seconds anyway. So, which uh, which three do you guys want to start with? Do we want to do fuck, marry, or that one that we want to become for a movie TV character? Uh, let's start off with Mary. Let's start off with a nice one. Oh, okay. Ease our way into it. Yeah. Okay. Dip our toe to jacuzzi. Yes, we'll do fuck baby. last. So. Oh, that's a first. Yeah. Okay, uh, Geiger, how about you go first? This is kind of your idea, right? I can't remember who brought up the text thread. No. Yeah, I mean, I kind of came up with the skeleton, and then we all kind of added the fat and muscle. But So me and Banner decided that it's not just movie characters. You can also do TV characters. So the person I would love to marry is Dolores Abernathy from Westworld. Ooh, okay. You could – I mean, she's beautiful, but you could, like, program her any way you want, really, because she's, like, a robot. And – so you could program her to go out. You could program her as like, oh, I just kind of want to stay in. So you go like, you know, control left, control L. I don't know how fucking Anthony Hopkins did it. Um, I would have to, I think he tried to download LimeWire. I think that's why she went fucking crazy and had like a virus on her and stuff. But you could just basically program it however you want. 
if you want to go golf and drink with the boys all day, you could just program her how like maybe she wants to have a girl's night and it's actually her idea. So you could actually go out and like go with the guys. If you want to have a romantic evening, you could program that. Or if you just want to go out and get shit face drunk with her, you could program that. You could just program it however you want. So basically uh-huh. it's oh, just a robot. I know I, I wish you wouldn't have started with me, Jeff, because we're trying to do this nice and that's probably really uh, misogynistic. So you should have started with someone else, but I'm not the host here. I'm just giving what you put on my plate. Hey, you're just playing the cards you were dealt. I mean, that's I'm all. playing the game. So speaking of like LimeWire screwing her up, do you think Dr. Uh, Robert Ford came back and he was like, why is she malfunctioning? And Bernard <laughs> Bernard is like, there's a new Maroon 5 song I'm trying to download yeah. the MP3 of. Just be patient. She had the X-Files soundtrack <laughs> downloaded on your... It um, said you might soundtrack. also enjoy, and I said, yeah, I would fucking also enjoy that. Please download that as well. God, LimeWire, if my mom's listening, I'm so sorry I fucked up our desktop computer so bad with that. Oh, I fucked I up like three of them. I don't know if it was that or... a perfect one. Um, my other one, uh, I guess my second one that I left at the altar... Would have been uh, I don't know Banner if you have this one. It's an X Men. Do you have this? No, no, I don't. Okay, I would have married Mystique because basically she can be anyone. She's anyone. Yeah, that's a cop out, but it seems fine. like you really can't pin down what you want in a woman because your two options are a woman you can program to do whatever you want, and then a chick. Oh, this this is yeah. definitely a trilogy. Stick around to fuck yeah. because I got a lot of issues that are about to come out. <laughs> yeah, Geiger, it kind of just seems like you want to marry yourself. I mean, if I was available, I miss, Mystique could just be me. That'd be awesome. Which Mystique? Just really Jennifer fat Lawrence? People hanging out. Rebecca Romaine Mystique. It's gotta be Rebecca Romaine, right? Absolutely, yeah. Jennifer, I want I want my wife to try, you know? God, that's a good one. <laughs> well played. All right, Banner, how about you? Which uh, movie or TV character would you want to marry? So, to marry, I would go with Gwen Stacy. Either the Emma Stone version or the one from Into the Spider-Verse. All right. She's smart. She's hot. So she would obviously get a great job that would support us and a family, <laughs> leaving me free to pursue my passions. Treasure hunting. Obviously. It was like drinking beer. Oh, okay. I thought he yeah. was, was going to make it like uh, it's all one connected universe and you were going to be Mr. Mom when Hulk Hogan was him. In that movie. <laughs> no, it's it's my passion is treasure hunting. Stay tuned for my bro version who I want to be. Little teaser there, tickle oh, your balls. Man. This is like segue on top of segways right here. We're crushing it. Um, got to keep think, stay stay tuned. You got to keep them tuned in. So for mine, I think it's well documented. This is really just bringing out our deep seated issues. I don't know if we should have done this in hindsight because we know that I've been on record on the pod a lot of times saying uh, I think there are a lot of uh, animated animals that I would get along with in a relationship. And this one is no surprise. Lola Bunny from the Toon Squad. You'd marry her. I would marry her. Yeah. yeah. I think okay. she's an alpha and she is the type of person who someone would cut us off in traffic driving our son to his T ball game and we'd pull over and she would be the one who beat the shit out of him. Like I wouldn't even have to do it. She's basically like and I'm just because we're trying to offend everyone tonight. She's basically like having a Hispanic girlfriend who just got out of prison, but she's like not all the bad things that come with that. You know, she's like respectable, and I think she also would clean up really well. But if we ever got in a fight, like I was just thinking a road rage incident, she would definitely be able to beat the shit out of the guy who cut us off, even if he's like a neo Nazi with barbed wire tattoos. It'd be an interesting Christmas because typically Catholics don't like bunnies, but I'm sure you guys, your families could make it work. Plus, imagine how athletic our kids would be. That's They'd true. Be, would they come out as – because you know when the Muppet Christmas Carol, shameless <laughs> plug, check out our movie commentary, Kermit yeah. and Miss Piggy's kids are either a frog or a pig. They're Depending not like – they're male or female, right? <laughs> yeah, they're not a mix. So would our kids be just bunnies or humans? Uh, I, shit, I don't, I don't know, man. I mean I think you would have to – Banner's the scientist, but right? – you would have to reproduce to find out, I guess. I mean, it'd be a pretty cool evolution. I mean, they're letting, you know, women become men now and play sports. So imagine a kid that's half bunny. They'd be faster than fuck. They'd, be, they'd only be on the track team. 
God, I'd be such a yeah, hell of a but he would definitely, definitely get his girlfriend pregnant in high school, maybe even middle school. You know, guys, I gotta like say, rabbits. even for us, yeah, this is <laughs> that's another reason you want to marry Lola because she fucks like a rabbit. She, that's my wife you're talking about, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Guys, even for us, this is a really fucking weird start to the show, I have to say. But we got to keep people listening because there's probably a video down to the right corner on, like, who has the biggest breasts in Hollywood that someone's about to fucking click on. So we got we got to turn it up a notch. Yeah, this there is, is the, au- the auditory version yeah. of Excuse me for a moment. There actually is. Let's take about a 10-minute break. I'll, we'll be back. I don't know what I'm going to do for the next eight and a half minutes. All right. Yeah. The marathon, man, like you last said, a minute and a half. All right. Uh, let's save fuck for last. So who would you want to be of any movie character if you could become one? Banner, we'll go reverse order. You can go. OK. So obviously, guys, we know that my passion is treasure hunting. So naturally, who would I be? Um, Wrong. I would be Matthew McConaughey from Fool's Gold. All right. Hang on here with me. You get to live on a boat, you get to drink beer, hunt for treasure, which obviously means you're going to be rich, and you get to be married to Kate Hudson. Matthew, Mc... Matthew yeah. McConaughey, I don't even think, would want to be Matthew McConaughey for Fool's Gold more than he was in that movie. But all right, And I, I never have to wear a shirt. Did he, did he do Fool's Gold and Sahara like back-to-back? People I like, think he did, yeah. Doing, People bro? are like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Hey, man, and then he did... The anyway. I, I actually well honestly think he rolling. did... <laughs> I think he went Fool's Gold, Sierra, and then he did True Detective. So people are like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? I bet if you get him high enough, he will tell you how Fool's Gold and Sahara connect somehow. And Cycli would definitely agree with him. Hey, well, like, look, if you've got 45 good. minutes, I can explain it to you. He's like, you're uh, just looking at the stories on the surface level, man. I mean, there's so much underneath that that you got to investigate, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> All right, Geiger, who, uh, if you could be any movie character, who would you be? So I, I was thinking about kind of copping out and doing a superhero because obviously like I was thinking about Hemsworth and Thor because every chick wants him and it's kind of badass. But I I did something else because I love this movie and we also get to plug our, our highest movie commentary of all time. But I don't think there's ever been anyone cooler as Brad Pitt as Rusty in Ocean's Eleven and Ocean's Thirteen. And I love fucking Vegas and – I just think of all Brad Pitt's characters, even in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he always plays the coolest fucking dude ever. But Rusty is the absolute coolest guy ever. And he always gets to just eat cool food. He's always eating like a quesadilla or ice cream or something like that. He definitely he's, follows his nose. That's for sure. Absolutely. He's pimped up in Vegas. You never see him with a chick except for Ocean's 12, I hear. I still have never seen that movie because I refuse to. Uh, but the coolest fucking character in cinema history, in my opinion. So I'd definitely be him. And yeah, I get Ocean. a frosted tip in my hair, which is cool. That'd be that. chill. You could pull that off. Ocean's 12, yeah, he's with a, a very attractive Catherine Zeta-Jones. I'll never see it. So. Just at a protest, or what's your deal? Because of Ocean's movies should be in Vegas. That's The original Ocean's movies were because Sinatra and his buddies wanted to do a movie in Vegas. And I have a problem with... The the Ocean's 11 is great, so is 13, but if it's not in Vegas, I have, I have no issue watching but they're on the run. I don't care. Jesus, I, don't know. I just feel like you're, you're being unfair. Yeah, I feel like it you're needs like to be a flashback a scene when they're on the run. I guess. Um, all right, mine is. Uh, I, I this like came to me while I was really thinking of this, and I was like, "This is so fucking stupid." But I want to be Robbie from the TV show Dinosaurs. Remember that That's show? That's the high school kid, okay, right? Yeah, I remember that yeah. show. Okay. With a fucking Letterman jacket and a faux hawk, dude. He was so fucking cool. Dude, he's not only banging the Tyrannosauruses, but he's also banging the Pterodactyls, which is a tough bridge to gap. Well, the problem is the Pterodactyls and the Tyrannosauruses are going to eventually talk, and then he's fucked. But until yeah, that but happens... He's got, he's, got, he's got the Triceratopses on his side, so he should be fine. That's true. Until they start talking, though, he's he's good. Damn, I almost want to be Tommy now from the Power Rangers or something like that, since we're going like old school '90s sitcoms. Yeah, That's when when I I just thought of how fucking cool Robbie is. He doesn't give a shit about anything, and he plays varsity sports. God damn! Like, Dad, you could never be a dinosaur. It's like it's impossible. You're a human <laughs> being. Don't give up on that dream. But I quit. It's like what? Yeah, he actually didn't say that. He said, quit being a fucking dinosaur and get a job. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. 
Dad, you're a human being. He's like so <laughs> troubled by all of it. So good. All right. Is it time to fuck one? Is it yeah, time to fuck some? Let's fuck some. Who would we want to hook up with of any uh, movie character ever? Geiger to you. All right. So I think this actress is probably the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. And that was back in the 90s. And she's still, if you follow her on Instagram, or you'll probably Google it right now, is still one of the most gorgeous women ever. And this role, she is so fucking hot. Elizabeth Hurley in Bedazzled. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just proves that uh, Dr. Dawson has not had the breakthrough we thought that we had on my last counseling session. Because not only do I like her because she's extremely hot, but just the fact that she's the devil in that movie gets me to have a boner which makes me a sick and disgusting and really lost soul that needs to find himself but oh well i don't know that's just my kicks man she is so hot in that fucking movie so hot uh is that brendan fraser in her yeah, that is that you banner, have to get through that yeah but... banner are you a big brendan fraser guy i can't remember i know you like the mummy uh movies. i like certain movies i like the mummy movies i like blast from the past uh encino man but really past that I could live without him. You know, like Looney Tunes back in action? Mm, no. <laughs> sorry. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Have it you just, seen it? It didn't hit home. Yeah, it just Have didn't hit home. It? <laughs> <laughs> just didn't hit home like I thought it would. I guess it's it's a little artsy. It's not for everyone. Oh, and the English accent too, Jeff. That makes a chick from a 9 to like a 12. I know. It's not even fair. <laughs> I was wondering the other day if she's hotter than that or Austin Powers, but because she's Satan in yeah, that, yeah, it, it does. makes her hot. That's what I said. We we all need to go to counseling. I am, and it's not helping at all. I think it's made things worse. It has actually. <laughs> God, God rest all of our souls. All right, Banner, how about you? Got to hook right. up with any movie character. Who is it? So first, I have an honorable mention because I almost went with this one. Um, and that was Hela from Thor Ragnarok. Because, I mean, just look at her. She's yeah. not going to say no to anything, right? Okay. We are we are tiptoeing to the satanic cult right now. But yeah. <laughs> but I decided hey, If that's not a to. demo that subscribes to podcasts, I'm willing to ride that fence for a week. Well, yeah, whatever. To see if it pays off in subscribers. All right, All right everybody. I'm going to need a little bit of leeway here on this. I need you guys to to remember what generation we are. Okay, we're all in our our late twenties, early thirties. That general general range. Super popular TV show at the time was this character was on. All right, that's Michelle Tanner. All right, you have to remember. What? I've been in I have been in love with her since I was two. All right, I grew up with this. This is like a twelve year old fantasy of mine. Okay, is Michelle the little kid? She's yeah, the old Twins. Yeah, it's the Olsen twins. So, but, so you're saying that you had a crush on her because you both are the same age, like the Olsen twin and twins. Yeah, and, and I've always the thought age. they were pretty so, and hot so when you, I was a kid. You had, a, you had a crush on her when she was four because you were four, and now you have a crush on her because she's like 30 and you're 29 or something. But the character we've never seen as a 30 year old is where, where I'm like a little. Confused. Yeah, that's because she's too busy in like London or Paris or something with her clothes with her yeah. uh, clothing line. If you guys have seen Fuller House, which I, know I saw have. the the one reference they made to her in the pilot episode, and right, see, so Banner, it you're makes in sense. that pedophile hole, just trying to dig you deeper. I'm trying to throw you a rope. I kind of get what you're saying. You see what just I'm keep... saying? Plus, there's two of them, so like, duh. not in and... the show. You're just talking about wanting to bang Mary Kate and Ashley. That's not what this is. No, it's Mary Kate Ashley. It's one person. Why don't you just say Elizabeth Olsen? She's hotter anyway. Two she is, but Elizabeth Olsen is more in the Mary category. Elizabeth Olsen be more more in the Mary Mary category because they did they didn't kill Heath Ledger. I was gonna say it does. Is part of what's turning you on the fact that they party so hard that they killed maybe the greatest actor of our generation? Maybe. Or is it just because you want a threesome? Again, maybe. Aren't they like witches or something? In real life? Yeah, I don't know. I no, thought, they I thought just I... look like witches because they've had some some surgery done. I'm I mean, pretty sure that's Hollywood, like a, right? a clickbait article I see all the time. Like, are Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen witches? And I was like, well, good enough for me. That sounds like something I'd definitely click on while I was taking a shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I'm the guy that's like, I believe it. It's like, well, we haven't even told you why we think that. No, I'm sold. I, I, I mean, you but don't have to explain it. Mention the idea of it, and you're you know, you're good enough for me. All right, mine. I've uh, my fiance is gonna roll her eyes. Yes, somehow people at home, I got a woman to agree to marry me, although she hasn't gone through that yet. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Um, this was the first woman that I ever. Basically, my sexual awakening as a seven or eight year old. Um, Dr. Chase Meridian yep. from Batman Forever, played by yep. Nicole. Check out our Batman Forever movie commentary. And I got to be honest, I believe it's realistic to me that no one in Gotham would even say anything to her about showing up in full lingerie to a, an open murder investigative crime scene. I mean, I don't know night. where you live, but that's what happens in my city. Yeah. She was I mean, obviously in bed. It happened at night. She didn't. She had time to put a blazer on, and that was it. I believe it. Her at that crime scene and then Seal, Kiss from a Rose coming on, it was like, let's go. It was just like the perfect confluence of events. And I loved Batman, too. So I was like, I was in the movie theater like, this is hitting me from every possible angle right now. This is incredible. Angles that you didn't, I, you didn't even know were angles at that no, age. Definitely I, not. See, we see. Okay. Done a commentary on that, right? Yeah, I just shamelessly plugged it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, remember how thirsty she was, and like you don't realize that as a kid, but she was like basically just saying, "Hey, will you fuck me on the bat symbol?" Pretty much to Batman the whole time. And I would nicely oblige. Bend her over the bat light. <laughs> Crime can wait. That would be calling crime will it... be there tomorrow. It's fucking yeah. Gotham. Trust me, there'll be another crime tomorrow. <laughs> She's like, I don't, but I think we should try and stop them all. <laughs> she wasn't, honestly, like, she wasn't even really doing her job to help Bruce cope with his shit. She was just so <laughs> horny all the time. Yeah, she just basically act like, can you have, like, hook me up with Batman? I'm really sexually starved here. I think Bruce at one point was like, are you going to help me get over my fucking issues with my parents? Or are you just going to talk about how bad you want to fuck Batman? It's like a little bit of both, but mainly the second one. Sometimes having sex with Nicole Kidman has been known to get people over to their divorced parents. It's true. See it's, only it happens. One. it's actually, I mean, yeah. It's scientifically proven. It's true. Most, most therapists suggest, look, I'm going to give you these prescription pills, but uh, if... If those don't work, then fuck uh, Nicole Kidman. By the way, Banner, my fiance just texted me. I guess she can hear us. I can't believe Brian wants to fuck Michelle Tanner. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think we're all sorry. having trouble. We're all having trouble wrapping our head around. Right yeah, now. it's. I don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At this point, I can't edit it out. It's the whole segment. Whatever. All right, how about we just do this? How about we just move on to our program? Yeah, just something that's not pedophilia for a while. Just for so a while. This, this is the part where we go around and talk about what is in our protein shake, hence the name protein shake, also known as what have we watched lately? Matt, I have watched four things. One of them I actually watched with you. One of them is a rewatch. How much? How many things did you watch? I have like four or five things, but they're all tied into one thing, kind of. Okay. Do you want uh, me to just say it real quick? <laughs> sure, why don't you go through yours? So, since Halloween just ended, as you know, I am a big fan of either Christmas, Halloween, once spring hits, once summer hits, once the U.S. Open starts, whatever. I always have movies that go along with it. Start of football season, I watch Jerry Maguire. Start of the U.S. Open or golf season, I watch Caddyshack, Tin Cup. Christmas movies, I have a plethora of movies to watch. Labor Day, we watch um, Jaws. Now, now, Halloween, I used to, to not. I used to not. Thank you, Banner. Halloween, though, I have to say, man, and Jeff, you can talk to this as our horror connoisseur, you and Cycli, but is it the worst kind of holiday for movie-wise? There's some good Halloween films, but they're not like Christmas movies that, like Elf, Christmas Vacation, Christmas Story, where literally in a month and a half, I could watch those like 20 times and not get sick of them. But after I watched the original Halloween um, I watched Scream. I watched like you know the original Saw or whatever. But I can't watch those. Even Hocus Pocus. I can't watch those like ten times in the month of October. Like I watch them once. I'm like hey, I watched it this Halloween. I will not watch it again till the next year. I don't. I don't know if it's just because it's 
they're not as fun movies to watch. They're more thrillers. They're not as lighthearted. But I think, I think the, the Halloween movies. Is, the, the difference is, is like Christmas movies and all those, those other themed movies. They're actually good movies because they're good movies. Halloween movies are generally good movies, but they're not actually good movies. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I think for me, Christmas is like, it just, it's maybe the reason it's like most people's favorite time of the year is dude, there's just like this palpable thing in the air. Like you can't even put your finger on it. Like you just know you're probably going to get like a few days off of work. Like you're going to be with your family. Like everybody's fucking happy. You're going to get shit in, as gifts. It's just like the best time of the year. And then new year's is always cool. Cause like you can bullshit yourself for three weeks. Like it's a new year. I'm, I'm different now. So all those things combined into one, and Christmas movies sort of embody that, like coming home, families. Halloween movies are – they're fun, but yeah, I'm with you. They're, they're all kind of the same trope, like murder. Yeah, I mean I love Scream. I watched Scream the other night with my wife, but afterwards I'm like, I'm not going to watch Scream again you know, around this Halloween time. But I am ready, dude. I'm so fucking ready to pop in Christmas Vacation, pop in Home Alone, pop in Christmas Story, like, that night of Thanksgiving. Like, I'm ready to watch these movies, like, three or four fucking times. The Santa Claus, which we've done, like, movie commentaries on all these, if you want to check them out. But I just look forward to Christmas. I mean, once spring comes or once summer comes, I look forward to watching Point Break, and I'll watch it, like, three or four times that fucking summer. But these Halloween movies, I'll watch them one, and I'm like, I do not want to watch that again. It was fun, I will I say... I will say this, though, and this is more just about the holiday, less about the movies, but when Christmas actually hits, because, like, the best part about Christmas is the build-up to it, right? Oh, yeah. When it actually happens, like... Stores, everything around it is fucking awesome. I know. Halloween is kind of, like, hot and heavy. Like, I I only really get into, like, super Halloween spirit for probably, like, a week before the holiday, and that's when I'll watch the movies. Like, I'll get to it in my protein shake here, but I watched a Halloween movie this week that... I don't think I'll ever watch again. It was a huge mistake. <laughs> and it, they only suckered me into it because of this time of year. Where it's Christmas, most of those movies, you're not like, dude, I'm never checking that out again. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I did. Just a point I, I wanted to make. And didn't explain anything. But that's my feelings. I'm sticking to it. Well, that's all I got. Just wanted to close out Halloween and get us ready for the next holiday. Um. So... Matt, you you might have mentioned this on a previous episode, but I realized that I hadn't brought it up on Protein Shake, and you and I watched Footloose. We did. We actually did a movie commentary on it. Honestly, as you're listening to this, just don't even fucking worry about it because it's probably not. I don't think it's dropping till like May. But honestly, but if if it hasn't dropped in six months, like set an alarm in your timer to email us or comment or tweet at us or something. To remind us, hey, you guys have that. Because there's a good chance we'll forget. I mean, it's definitely scheduled on YouTube to drop. I just have no idea when. And it's a ways away. But definitely um, look forward to it. Because I think it was one of our best ones. Matt, What? really quickly, just as kind of a teaser what they can expect. What are your thoughts on the movie? The original with Michael Keaton. Excuse me. Kevin Bacon. Michael Keaton. What the fuck? I'm wrong with you. <laughs> God, he- I wish Michael Keaton did. <laughs> that would be fucking fuck. awesome. What are your thoughts on the original film? What do you mean we can't dance? Um, <laughs> it's, it's a very, very warm movie to my heart, especially being married to a preacher's daughter and uh, me kind of have a rebellious spirit if you've ever listened to any of our podcasts. But it's more so me, Jeff, and Brian are just trying to give you guys what you want. And we just try to look at what's the highest viewed and a lot of our highly viewed ones are just like 80s fucking rom-com or like cult classics so what better movie to do than fucking footloose uh me and banner also did fucking top gun so be ready for that too but if you guys have any movies like that uh you know roadhouse we've already done um dirty dancing is one of our highest ones if you guys have some of those 80s movies that you fucking love and you'd love us to just destroy Comment below. We'd be more than happy to do them. I love doing '80s movies. Dude. There's so much material for '80s movies. I know. So it was just such a simpler time, and film encapsulated that so perfectly. Like the things that people thought were fucking problems in the '80s is like literally a slow Tuesday now. <laughs> it's like not that big a deal. I mean, the world is so fucked up. 
Yeah, so Footloose, keep your eye, eyes uh, open for that one. Um, I rewatched. Uh, my mom was in town, and we, we she hadn't seen it, so we we watched uh, Spider Man Far From Home. Oh, nice! And dude, this movie it's really good. Like I know I said it on our review, I really enjoyed it, but um, there's just a lot of good shit there. Gyllenhaal is a lot better than I gave him credit for. I wish we got a little more Aunt May, but again, the story him being in Europe obviously doesn't lend itself to that very well. And I think they did a really good job of acknowledging the events of Endgame, playing off of them. But it it still is very, very much Peter's movie and Spider-Man's movie. And I don't have much else to say. I just, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a nice kind of, I don't want to say palate cleanser, but it was like the, uh, the little mint that you eat after the dinner that was Endgame. Kind of cleanse your palate there a little bit. And then a, another one I watched... <clears throat> And Geiger, especially, I got to recommend this movie to you. It's called The Ice Harvest. Have you ever heard of this with Billy Bob Thornton? No, it's a new or old. It's pretty old. Let me look up the year. It's a 2005 movie. Um, and it takes place the night before Christmas in Kansas City. Um, the plot is it's a uh, crime drama comedy. Is it a Christmas it, movie? Is it like it Die is. Hard? It takes place the day before Christmas, and basically these two kind of con men, played by John Cusack and Billy Bob Thornton, just stole a shit ton of money from someone, and they both have, like, ex-wives or, like, fucking kids in the town. They have fucking people that they have to visit on Christmas Eve, but they really need to get the fuck out of town. But they're basically... Billy Bob Thornton's like, my ex-wife will fucking kill me if I don't stop over for dinner. He's like, Jesus, fine, let's go. And they're just like bumbling fucking and they start to get like way too drunk to leave town that night, even though they have all this goddamn money that they need to get out of Dodge with. <laughs> and then there's some twists and turns and some other really well-known actors show up. I, it's a weird fucking movie. But if you if what I just described sounds interesting to you and it definitely yeah. feels it definitely feels like a Christmas film. I watched this one with my mom also. I think you'll enjoy it. The Ice Harvest kind of has that Coen Brothers humor where like. Something will happen. Someone will get shot, and you're like, should I be laughing at this? Because I thought that was really funny. <laughs> that guy gets shot in the fucking head. And you're from Kansas City, so you'd probably recognize a lot of the places they go. That I am. Yeah. I, so yeah, I'll dig that, man. I'll check that It's out. like small town Kansas, Christmas Eve. And okay. Every, every yeah. Uh, and then one last thing I watched. I actually have like 10 minutes left on it. I'll probably finish it after this. And God damn it, do I regret it. Uh... I went back and revisited the Disney Channel original movie, Halloween Town. Mm, this man. movie is an absolute piece of shit. And who's you know the, the actress in that, the older lady? She's like kind of famous, right? Uh, She's Judith like Hope, Betty White. Who is April oh, Debbie Reynolds. Is De Debbie grandma. Reynolds, yeah. But her yeah, daughter is Slade's mom. Yeah, right. Yeah. Her daughter is Judith Hogue, who played April O'Neil in the very first uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. Which, How... Did we do commentary on that? I think we did. Uh, yeah. We did, maybe? No, we've done the second one. We've done Secrets of the Use. Uh, we might have done the first one, too. I don't know. Look it up if you're interested. We don't know. <laughs> so, Banner, when was the last time you saw Halloween Town? Because I know I texted you about it, and you had a few memories. So, I watched, I'll say, two-thirds of it in pieces. Um Baby Banner and Brooke Banner would have it on the TV when I get home from work. So I've watched bits and pieces of it this year, like within days. Was even Baby Banner like, uh, what is this? Yeah. Well, the worst part is somehow Halloween Town 3 got put on. And if you think Halloween Town 1 is a bad movie, let me correct you on that. I just, it's like Disney is laughing in our face with the lack of effort and money they've spent on 95% of the costumes in this thing. I mean, you can see fucking zippers on the back of people. Yeah. Oh, the costumes I'm not are kidding. god awful. No, they're literally like take a black t-shirt and like hot glue some felt to it where it's half falling off. There is one scene. This is just I almost think we should do a commentary on it cuz Oh, we definitely we get, should. If we get Geiger 3 beers deep, this thing's only an hour 15 minutes. If we get Geiger 3 beers deep before this starts, he'll the people will be calling him I, like, hey, I've man. seen it because it was part of the Disney Channel original movies, right? Like back when we yeah. were in middle school, that was all the time. And I just kind of remember like the grandma lives in Halloween Town 
and the kids come and visit on Halloween or something, and now Halloween Town's being taken over by some evil mayor, and they got to stop them. Is yeah, that so right? So the kids yep. don't don't know about Halloween Town. The grandma, they don't know their grandma's a witch. She okay. comes to visit them on Halloween. The one of the girls uh, turns thirteen on Halloween, which is obviously very significant. I think it was a Friday as well. Yeah, they follow their grandma back to Halloween Town. They s- sneak aboard a bus, and the chick who turned thirteen realizes if she's not trained as a witch. Uh, before she turns 13, she'll lose her powers forever. So wow. you know, pl- hilarity ensues, I guess. And her younger brother, I must just say, let me read you the text I sent to Banner. So this kid thinks that he's roasting people, like he'll say a burn to them, but it doesn't make any fucking sense. It makes sense. zero fucking sense. Banner, was this just, no, this was all three of us in the text thread, right? Because I want to find this. Yeah, to be honest with you, I don't remember. Hang on, I'm almost there. I remember what, what the, you were the whole thing about, but... too. I hate doing. I hate when they do that as a plot twist. Like, and if she doesn't get her powers by thirteen, she'll lose them forever. That'd be like when you're fifteen. It's like if you don't fuck this chick now, like you'll never have sex again in your life. I'm like that makes no sense, really. But okay. But I would believe it as a fifteen. If you don't person. do this now, you'll lose it forever. Like, uh, all right. Okay. Last thing I'll say about this. Here is the uh, quote that I sent to Brian. So this is the main. Uh, wizard chick who's 13 this is an argument she has with her younger brother who's like 8 and she says to him quote you'd win an ugly contest and he responds with quote I'd rather win than be the judge yep. what, yeah. what does that mean that anyway sense. like I, I guess if he was the judge he would have to look at the ugly people contest and I mean, so if he's the winner, he doesn't have to look at ugly people. I don't know, because he's in the same fucking contest as them. I tried. I tried great, to defend him. Great. That, that's when I know playing devil's advocate is hard for you. It's really hard. All right, Halloween Town. Nah. All right, Brian, what do you got? All right. So I, uh, I'll stick with this, this theme here. So first off, don't ask me why. Don't ask me how I get into these situations. But uh, I went ahead and watched the Disney Channel original movie. Now, this came out kind of after we were kids, not really watching the original movies as much. But Camp Rock. This is the one with the Jonas Brothers. Geiger, have you seen this? I have seen bits and pieces of it, yes. Just because, you you know, when you watch something that's so bad, it's like a car wreck. No, it's called Camp Rock. It's a Disney Channel original movie, Jeff. Uh, this is the one with the Demi Lovato. This is like where he, she got her start, and the Jonas Brothers are in it. All three of them? Uh, they all three are in it, but this one focuses on... Uh, what's the middle one, Joe? Nick? Nick? No, it's not Nick. I'm pretty what sure What even is Joe. the third one's name? Joe Applebaum? Jones. Joe, Nick, and what? What's the other one's name? Probably like Tim or... Jim. I was thinking like he looks like a Greg. Like they're not they're they're not gonna name him like I don't know, like Tyrell or something. (laughs) I'm guessing it's a four letter biblical name, I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh anyway, guys, this movie's not good. Like the songs aren't really that good. The dancing was absolutely horrible. It was like they were trying to do high school musical, but they didn't know how to do it yet. That's that's kind of how I would. Well, they didn't it. have our boy Kenny Ortega. Exactly. I actually have that in my notes. It says plot was fine, but everything about this type of movie that I enjoy, they missed on. The reason why is because Kenny Ortega did not direct or was not involved in it. Yes. Kenny Ortega also did Hocus Pocus. Check out that movie commentary. Yep. Actually, the, when his name comes up in the opening credits, we all lose our shit. We're like, who the fuck? Because the way they present it, it's like he's a big dick, and we I had no idea Kenny who Ortega he was. Joint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's actually what it said. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think Nate Thurman goes, God damn, when you have Kenny Ortega, you lead with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll save that. You lead like with this. the stars. That's what gets the people in the door. That's what gets the people to buy the tickets. Jesus Christ. All right. And you guys know I have a problem with if there's multiple of the movies, I have to watch them all. So I watched Camp Rock 2. Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> um. Better dancing, uh, but overall it was still fucking stupid. I mean, the songs, I guess, were a little better than the first one. 
Uh, but that really didn't change my mind. It was it was fucking bad. Like I would rather watch Halloween Town than this. Of all the things we've said on this episode that would alarm our therapist, Banner having watched Camp Rock Two is probably the biggest red flag. Banner, to pile on you really quick, every single time we get a beer together from now on, just know whenever I look around, it's because I'm going to look at the entire bar and know there's only one person here that has watched Camp Rock 1 and 2, and he's drinking a beer with me right now. There's no way in hell we'll ever be in public together, and there'll be two people that watch both those movies. No way. That's our new thing. When we're out, I'm going to walk up to people. Sir, have you seen Camp Rock 2? Because this guy has. Banner, give me the plot for Camp Rock, too. Why did we return to the camp? (laughs) Well, so it's a summer camp, right? So they go for the summer. Are they counselors? No, not in the first one. But in the second one, a rival camp comes in and invites all the staff from their camp to work for them for, like, more money and benefits and chicks and stuff. Like Team X Blade of singing. Exactly like, exactly like Team X Blade. You want to get paid to do something you love? (laughs) Fuck you. What? It kind of That's seems like best That's a premise of Brink. We need to do that movie, too, because it's the stupidest premise I've ever heard. I'm like, I like to drink beer. Someone's like, you want to get paid to drink beer? You sell out? Like, yeah, that actually sounds pretty fucking cool. Sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, so then they don't have enough staff, and they have to close the camp. So then Demi Lovato and all her friends are like, oh, well, let's leave it open, and we'll be counselors. And then now they're the counselors. That, that's your plot. Okay. Sounds they, like a lot of tension. Yeah, they fight the other the other camp rock. You mean dance fight, right? Yes, obviously. No one, no one throws a punch. No, no. There was a few swings, but nothing connected. Hmm. All right. Oh. Um going on to real movies now. Uh I've never seen Hot Tub Time Machine. I love Hot Tub Time Machine. I Great, I gosh. watched it for the first time. Uh, I thought it was fun. I love uh, Rob Corddry. Uh, he's in Ballers also. Yeah. Um, and I thought he was great in this. Uh, I think the idea of the movie was really fun. Uh, there are definitely parts where I laughed out loud and were fucking hilarious. But overall, meh. It was okay. I don't know if it's because I watched it so much later when it came out. I think it came out like 2010, 2012, something like that. It was a while ago. So maybe it would have been funnier then to me. Um but yeah, it was fine. I liked it. I How'd you like it. seeing Winter Soldier in the 80s? Yeah, very, very funny. I, they made him look really short for some reason to me. I don't really remember his. I just remember they fight him at that party. Yeah. So I've, never, I've never seen that movie. It's pretty funny. It, it was funny. I don't know that I'll ever go back and visit it again. The Crispin Glover gag is fucking hilarious. So funny. <laughs> the whole movie, you're like, is it going to happen now? <laughs> but he's like making that ice sculpture yeah and he like starts juggling the chainsaws Geiger it's a pretty stupid movie but there's definitely some laughs in it yeah okay. when he calls his nine year old like his wife when his wife was nine years old I was dying at that part oh yeah she picks up and he... so Geiger one plot so they travel back in time and Craig Robinson's wife in present day has just cheated on him he's like 15 years older than her so when they go back in time he he calls her to, like, bitch at her for cheating on him, but she's, like, nine. So she answers the phone. He's like, you fucking slut. She's like, what? It's pretty funny. Again, very Isn't there two of them? Yeah, the second one is horrible. They go into the future. Adam Scott replaced John Cusack. It's, like, a fucking mess. Okay. Huh. Um... I was waiting for Banner to say, so I watched Hot Hot Tub Time... So you watch Camp Rock 1 and 2, but not Hot Tub Time Machine 2, and you literally liked the first one? In my defense, I just finished Hot Tub Time Machine 1, so next week Hot Tub Time Machine 2 will probably be on my list. Yeah, someone has to watch it for us. Yeah. Uh, Next thing I watched, District 9. I hate this movie. People love it, though. Really? I enjoyed it. Is that the prequel to The Mighty Ducks? No, it's like the super fucking political sci-fi thriller. Does anybody get that? Yes, I got it. Oh. Like, Is that their team name? No. Yes, it was. The Mighty Ducks on the first one? It was like District something. A team was named their... District 9? 
Go back and rewatch it. Yes, it was. Cyclically screaming at us, right? It's they were called like District Five or District Nine. Because I thought we have to listen to the pod to scream at us. That's true. <laughs> Sorry, Banner. District 9, what do you think? No worries. Uh, I enjoyed it. I think a sequel would be kind of interesting. Um, it, to me, was a very realistic take on if aliens actually came and landed here and used Earth as a rest stop. But, I don't know, it was oh, fine. Th- that's definitely how it would play out, like, seriously. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we would send some extra missiles at it first before we, like, encamped them. But, it was so, Tiger- fine. Basically, the plot of it, Geiger, is aliens land on Earth, but they're, like, not necessarily, like, violent. They're just, like, basically immigrants. And so we put them in, like, their own place, make them live there, but we, like, mistreat them and people are, like, It's like the slums. So it's, like, Mexico? Pretty much. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. (laughs) Also, Banner, I think my problem, I just didn't like the main character in it. Yeah, I cool. I could see that. He was trying too hard, I think. Yeah. I could see how if you didn't didn't like him or didn't buy him as the bumbling idiot at the beginning, like super nice guy, if you didn't buy that at the beginning, I could see how you would not enjoy the rest of the movie cuz like that's his arc. Yeah. He's just like sniffling the whole time and I'm like, "Dude, you're annoying me." Yeah. I I I can respect that. I understand. Um, think that's it. Oh, uh, follow up from last time. I did watch High School Musical two as well. High School Musical two is the only of the three I haven't seen. And what is it with you? Because that takes place at a summer camp, also, right? Uh, that takes place at a country club. They're all working there for the summer. Oh, got it. Okay. Man, you what? So you watch District Nine, Camp Rock One and Two, and High School Musical Two. I mean, that's very that's what and I love about hot tub, always, and Hot Tub Time Machine. It's always you ever get eclectic. divorced and have your own shitty apartment? Like, I, you'll just have to have a show on your own, just on a fucking just saying shit you watched all week. No, where you find the time? I just love how random his stuff is. It's like so exciting for me because I never know what the fuck he's going to say he watched previous week. Uh, yeah, I think that, uh, that sums it up. That's it. All right, before we move on to the very last part of our show, Banner, I know there was a question you, earlier, you were like, hey, throw it to me real quick, I gotta ask something. Yeah, I just need to know, uh, from our fans, really, if, uh... Oh my god, what? You sound like Iago from Aladdin, but he's being, like, choked. Yeah. That and sounded a lot better in my head. What Banner is referencing is our question and answer segment on the show called, Do You Even Lift Bruh? Bruh. We dig up a question from the internet, usually Twitter, and we read it on our show. Tonight's question comes to us from Joe Ashley at Black Disney One, who says, Having a debate with my friend that Indiana Jones is a glorified grave robber. Do you think that is true? And what would you hide in your temple or grave that you want no one to know, including family, to find? Well, this is one of our darkest episodes, so it's perfect that this is the question. Geiger, what better way to uh, close with this than to throw it to you first? Man, I don't think Indiana Jones is a grave robber, man. Like, fuck that. That's not... We can't diagram 80s movies too much. It was a different time. Let's just say that. He was just trying to stop the Nazis and do some other shit. But... If I did have a temple or something to put in some belongings, there, there's a lot of shit I did in the 90s that's very embarrassing. Like, uh, I'd want my fifth grade picture in there uh, where I had a bowl cut. Or, like, literally when I get a haircut now, like, I'll get a shave on the side and trim on top, and they'll shave the side first. I'll be like, this is what I used to look like. They just shave the side, and they wouldn't do anything on top. And yeah, I just have a bowl cut. I'd want all my FUBU sweater vests in there. Uh, I did. Yes, I did wear. Used to wear a Fubu. I was kind of a chunky kid. Um, now I'm just a fat ass human. If you ask Jeff's mom. God, you're um, disgusting. And then lastly, I'd want, <laughs> I'd want an album in there. But I don't know if you guys remember this. Like at Walmart, it, they weren't albums. They were just singles, like a CD, which is oh, like yeah. one song. And yeah, they were like be, they were like three bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And mine would be I'd throw in a five when the lights go out. Do you remember that song? 
Mm-hmm. I remember the there. band Five. I don't remember the song now. Do you remember this at all? Not really. No, I don't we, remember really? that at all. Are we going to get sued for playing this? Uh, not if you play it with under 30 seconds. Um, I don't know. Five needs money, dude. They're going to fucking come for us. Everyone's going to Google now Five when the lights go out. But you remember the band Five, right? They only had one song, and I was smart enough to just basically be like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking get this single. And I would want that in the tomb. I don't want any paper trail that I bought that. Because <laughs> back then, dude, saving up like 15 bucks to buy a CD is a big deal. So, like, if I only want one of the 14 songs, I'm not going to yeah. make the investment. That's a good one. Beta, are you ready or do you want me to go first? Uh, you go. All right. Um, so, I hate to say this, but I, by textbook definition, Joe, yeah, I mean, Indiana Jones is a grave robber. And I guess... Sadly, now he's even uh, considered an extraterrestrial grave robber, which maybe that's parts illegal. I don't know. Do we have laws that protect aliens' graves? Or I guess the creatures from beyond the beyond, wherever the fuck they said they were in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? I've only seen it once and I refuse to see it again. <laughs> Two things that I would probably want in my grave or tomb um, would be probably my mom's old VHS of Titanic because... If anyone were to pop it in a VCR, they would see that it is strategically uh, stopped like 11 seconds before Kate Winslet's tits come out. And that would be pretty hard to explain. Another thing would probably be, I don't know if you can't like tangibly put this in a grave or tomb, but all access to my Zanga that I used to have in eighth or ninth grade. Although someone told me recently that Zanga is totally shut down, wiped from the Internet. I don't know if that's physically possible. I didn't know you could do that. I don't think you can, but that's great news, if if so. Um, and then the last thing would probably be uh, my wedding vows to my ex-wife, Rachel. Um, apparently, they fucking meant nothing. So, you know what? Let's just hide those from the eyeballs of the rest of the world forever. Because when you make a pact and a promise to someone, you don't agree that some waiter at a TGI Fridays, no matter how fucking cool he is, is going to break up your marriage. Great question, Joe. Great question. Vayner, take us home. Yeah, he's not a grave robber, all right? What has he ever actually stolen? Didn't he steal the Ark of the Covenant? Yeah, he took it for a little while, but then he gave it back to God. Just said, okay? Yeah, it's, it's that's not returning, in his trophy That's right really, right he was returning it to him. What's the thing that he stole that in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, they go to that warehouse and it's there? Remember in the beginning? Yeah, that might be the Ark, actually. Of the Covenant? Yeah. Um, well, but also, he only brought back um, the Holy Grail because he knew it was going to fucking curse him. No, he also brought back that stone in uh, Temple of Doom back to that village so that they don't die. Okay, but was that from a grave? Oh, so you're saying... None of this is from a grave. Well, then he's not a grave robber. Oh, that's what I'm... See? He's not a grave robber. But I thought the... He's a tomb robber. He's a tomb raider. Yeah, but what is a tomb? A tomb is a... No, he's an archaeologist. He's just discovering the past. Well, you can be an archaeologist and, like, a rapist and a murderer. You can still be a criminal just because you have a job. You can just be the sir, I'm just doing my job, Okay. He he put that cross from the... Third one at the beginning in a museum. I mean, look, I don't want him to be uh, punished for doing his job. I mean, it's just, it's not the most savory profession. Case in point, the people that he associates with. But again, he is probably the best of, of the people in that field. For sure. Yeah, I would, I mean, I can only assume. All right, now, Banner, something you wouldn't want buried with you, or you would want buried with you so no one ever found it? Probably the keyboard to my computer, for obvious reasons. So you could track keystrokes? Mm-hmm. Would yeah, you want to... Hopefully, no, hopefully no one has a black light in that tomb, either. I was about to say, let's hope you're not buried in, like, a fucking laser tag arena or anything, because look like Just a... As every- Star-Lord says, it would look like a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> 
<laughs> Better be like the the splat on the space ball space bar is kind of a cute story if anyone wants to hear it. Like no, no we're, we're, good. Good. we're good, we're fine. All right, before we leave the people for our ninety second and probably most controversial episode, <laughs> any parting thoughts, Geiger? No, I think we've got everything out and offended everyone, and we'll probably have no subscribers by the time this drops. So I'm probably good. I think you're probably right on all fronts. Banner, how about you? Just don't forget to pull over for emergency vehicles. Very well said, as always. For our enforcer in the paint, Matt Geiger, and the mad scientist, Brian Banner. I'm the mayor, Jeff Hornacek, and we are the Bro4 Squad podcast. Thank you guys so much for checking us out. Follow us on Twitter at Bro4Squad. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. Type in Bro Force Squad. That is three separate words. Um, find all of our reviews on letterboxd.com. Just search Bro Force Squad, three words there, and follow us. And then check out everything we post, our squad blog, and the Bro Force Squad Hall of Fame on our website, broforcesquad.com. Till next time, we will see you at the movies. I'm surprised no one said Nala. I figured you would. Nala's was very that. material, right? Yeah, that's true. Nala's very material. Jeff, no one said Nala because no one wants to fuck animals, just you. That's why no one said Nala. <laughs> one time. It was Valentine's.